For many machine learning models, it's important to make sure that all numeric features have broadly the same minimum and maximum. In other words, that they are normalized. To see why, Let's go back to the k-nearest-neighbor classifier from the first lecture. Imagine we are using a one-nearest-neighbor classifier. That is, it only looks at the nearest example and copies its class. In this plot, it looks like the blue and the red dot are the same distance away. But note the range of values for the two features, years and pupil dilation. Because years are measured in bigger units than pupils, the blue dot will always be much closer. But this distinction is not meaningful. What we want to look at is how much spread there is in the data and use that as our distance. We do that by normalizing our data before feeding it to the model. We'll discuss three approaches to solving this problem. Normalization, which reshapes all values to lie within the range 0 to 1. Standardization, which reshapes the data so that, so that its mean and variance are those of a standard normal distribution, 0 and 1 respectively, and whitening, which looks at features together to make sure that as a whole their statistics are those of a multivariate standard normal distribution. These terms are often used interchangeably. We'll stick to these definitions for this course, but in other contexts you should check that they mean what you think they mean. So let's start with normalization. We want to scale the data linearly so that the smallest point becomes 0 and the largest becomes 1. The way we achieve that is first by taking the smallest point, x min, subtracting that from every point in the data. So you can imagine this set of green points being moved uniformly to the left so that the leftmost green point coincides with 0. And then we look at the range of the data, the distance between the smallest and the largest point, and we divide by that range. In other words, we shrink all the points so that the largest point coincides with the value 1. And the transformation to achieve that is that a, that a new x is the old x minus the minimal value divided by the range. And we do this independently for each feature. So this is a one-dimensional transformation. Another option is standardization, which follows much the same process. We look at the mean and the standard deviation of the data, and apply a linear transformation that results in a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And this is that transformation. We subtract the mean and then divide by the standard deviation, and the result is this. And as before, you can visualize this by thinking of the data as being shifted uniformly to the left and then, and then divided by the standard deviation to shrink the extent of the data. In essence, we are transforming our data so that it looks like it was sampled from a standard normal distribution, or as much as we can with a one-dimensional linear transformation. One way to understand this process is to think of the data as being sampled from a standard normal distribution, a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1, and then translate it into the data that we observe with a different mean and a different standard deviation. And if we want to transform data sampled from a standard normal distribution to data that is distributed according to a distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then this is the transformation we apply. We first stretch out the data by multiplying each instance by sigma and then translate it around by adding a value mu, which will become the new mean. The result is the data we observe. What we want to do when we standardize the data is essentially reverse this process. To do so, we can estimate the mean and the standard deviation from the data, which we know how to do, and then reverse the transformation that we see on the left. So we apply the inverse operation in reverse order. So the last operation we apply on the left is summing mu. So we start by subtracting mu, and then we apply the reverse operation for sigma. So we divide by sigma. And this is the inverse operation of uh, what we see on the left, so this will translate the data back to the standard normal distribution that we imagine the data came from. Here's what standardization looks like if we apply it to data with two features. We apply standardization to each feature independently. We start with this data. This data is uncorrelated. That means that the value of one feature 
will not help you predict the value of another feature. And if we apply standardization to this, we end up with a nice spherical distribution of points centered on the origin. This is what data sampled from a multivariate normal distribution looks like. The multivariate version of the standard normal distribution we saw previously. Here's the same process for another data with also uncorrelated features. And again, we see a nice spherical distribution. However, if we have correlated features, if the value of one feature is predictive of the value of the other feature, then the result of standardization looks like this. And this is not what data sampled from a multivariate standard normal distribution looks like, because the data is still correlated. You can still predict the value of one feature from the value of the other feature. This is because we standardize each feature independently, and the features are not independent. So is there a way to achieve the same effect with the correlated data? Can we transform the features somehow so that it looks like they came from a distribution on the one top right? This is what whitening can do for us. We should note before we move on that whitening is not usually necessary in practice. Normalizing or standardizing each feature independently is usually fine, especially if your model is powerful enough to learn about correlations. However, for the rest of the lecture, it is instructive to see how to perform this transformation, and in some cases, it can improve your performance. In essence, we want to transform the data that we have to something that looks like this. Data that looks like it was sampled from a multivariate standard normal distribution. We can ask the same question differently. Can we express the data in another coordinate system? So that in the new coordinate system, the features are not correlated. So instead of moving the data to the origin and stretching it out in a particular direction, we move the axes to the data, rotate them, and shrink them in one direction and stretch them in the other direction. And in this picture, the data looks the same, but because we've moved the axes around, the data now looks standard normally distributed. It's the same operation, it's just a different way of looking at it. In order to show how we do this, we need to revise some bits of linear algebra. Specifically, we need to look at linear bases. To start with, here's a quick reminder of how summing vectors works. We have a vector a and a vector b, and to sum them up, we stick the tail of B onto the head of A, and then we draw a line from the tail of A to the head of B. Using this principle, we can see our basic Cartesian coordinate system as made up entirely of the two vectors, 1, 0, and 0, 1. To describe a point anywhere in the plane, we just sum up a number of copies of A with a number of copies of B. So the point 3, 2 can be described as three copies of A added to two copies of B and any point in the plane can be described in this way. When we think of these vectors in this way, we call them basis vectors. Vectors that allow us to describe all points in a space in terms of a multiple of each of the basis vectors. And the set of points that can be described in this way is the space spanned by the basis vectors. And we can now look at what happens if we define different basis vectors. So here we have an orange and a purple basis vector. Let's call them C and D. And here again, we can describe any point in the plane by summing together a number of copies of C and a number of copies of D. And if we know the coordinates of a point, let's say the blue point here, in our non-standard coordinate system, it's easy to find the coordinates in the standard basis that we saw on the previous slide. For instance, here, the blue point is broadly at the coordinates described by two and a half copies of the purple vector C and half a copy of the orange vector D which means that if we take two and a half copies of C and add them to half a copy of D, and we work that out, we get the point 3, 2. So in this non-standard basis expressed by C and D, the blue point is described by the coordinates two and a half and one half. And in the standard basis that we saw on the last slide, that same point is described by the coordinates three and two. What we often do with basis vectors is to concatenate them into a matrix. We'll call that B. So in this notation, we see C and D in right brackets. We'll take that as a concatenation operation. And the result is a matrix, the columns of which are the vectors C and D. And the operation we saw on the last slide, getting from this non-standard basis to the standard basis, can now be expressed by matrix multiplication. And with this, we can also figure out how to go the other way around. From the standard basis to a non-standard basis, we simply invert the operation and multiply by the inverse of B. 
Since inverting a matrix is an expensive and numerically unstable business, it's good to focus, if possible, on orthonormal bases. That is, bases for which the basis vectors are orthogonal, the angle between any two bases is 90 degrees, and normal, all vectors have length 1. If that's the case, then the matrix transpose of B, which is simple to compute without loss of precision, is equal to the matrix inverse. So we can switch back and forth between bases quickly without losing information. So with that, let's go back to the problem of whitening. We can now rephrase what we're aiming to do. We want to find a set of new basis vectors so that we can express the data in a coordinate system where the features are not correlated and the variance is one in every direction. These are the basic properties of a standard multivariate normal distribution. Note that the latter means that we can't have an orthonormal basis. The basis vectors can't be one. There are some tricks to deal with this, but we'll not mention them here. To figure out how to find this basis, we will follow the same principle as we did with standardization. We will assume that the data was generated by a standard multivariate normal distribution, followed by a translation and a change of basis, with a change of basis causing some features to become correlated. We will attempt to reverse the process in three steps. We will fit a non-standard multivariate normal distribution to the data, we will figure out the transformation that transforms the standard multivariate normal distribution to this multivariate normal distribution, and then we'll apply the inverse of this transformation. And if you've never seen it before, a multivariate normal distribution is a generalization of a one-dimensional normal distribution. Its mean is a point indicated by a vector, and its variance is determined by a symmetric matrix called a covariance matrix. The values on the diagonal of the covariance matrix indicate how much variance there is along each dimension, and the off-diagonal elements indicate how much covariance there is between dimensions. The standard multivariate normal distribution has its mean at the origin, and the identity matrix as its covariance matrix. That is, its features are uncorrelated, and the variance is one along every dimension. If we have some data and we want to fit a multivariate normal distribution to it, we need to find the parameters, the mean and the covariance matrix that fit best. And computing these values for your data looks like this. The mean looks a lot like the one-dimensional mean. We simply sum up all the vectors that make up our data and divide by the number of vectors. And for the sample covariance matrix, we create a data matrix that is mean-centered by which I mean that we subtract the mean from every point. Then we multiply that by its transpose, and we divide by n or by n minus 1. These are two estimators, just like in the case of the standard deviation. One is the maximum likelihood estimator, and one is the unbiased estimator. And for large data sets, it doesn't really matter which one you use. And a neat trick that we're going to make a lot of use of is that we can define any multivariate normal distribution as a transformation of the standard normal distribution. So let's say we have a linear transformation defined by a square matrix A and a translation vector T, and we sample a point from a standard normal distribution X. And then we transform that point by our linear transformation A and T. We multiply it by A and we add T. Then we get a new point, and we can ask what is the distribution of that new point. Now, so long as our transformation is linear, then the new point is also normally distributed. And we can prove that its mean is t, and its covariance matrix is a times a transposed. And any multivariate normal distribution can be described in this way, given the right transformation. Here's what that looks like. We imagine some data sampled from a multivariate standard normal distribution. We multiply first by some matrix A to squish and rotate it. And then we apply a translation vector to translate it to the right point in space. And just as before, if we imagine that our data is generated in this way, so the observed data is the data at the top right, and the whitened data is the data that we want to recover, then what we want to do is to invert this transformation. And the way to do that is to estimate the covariance matrix and to estimate the mean from the data, to find some A, and in slide 69, we saw that the covariance after our transformation was A times A transposed. So if we estimate the covariance S and find some matrix A such that A times A transposed equals that S, 
then we can use that a for the inverse transformation. And since the multiplication by a doesn't change the mean, we know that the translation vector t is equal to the mean m. Once we know a and t, we can reverse the transformation as shown here. We first subtract the translation vector and then multiply by the inverse of a. Compare this to the standardization operation. There we subtract the mean and multiply by the inverse of the standard deviation. Here we do the same, but in multiple dimensions. Note that the standard deviation by which we divide squared is the variance, just like the A matrix squared here gives us the covariance. So that's widening. Like I said earlier, it's not usually necessary, but it is something you can try to see if it improves the performance of your model. In the last video of this lecture, we'll look at a method you can use if you have too many features for a particular model. In that case, you want to reduce the dimensionality of your data set. One way to do that is by principal component analysis. And as it turns out, principal component analysis has a lot to do with whitening as well.